I have no idea why people have faith in God or anything else they can't see or touch. I'm not religious. But I've noticed that many people who subscribe to the supremacy and authority of God are starting to have a problem with the presumed supremacy and authority of government. They feel they can only serve one master. They feel that to serve two masters requires the betrayal of one master for the benefit of the other, an impossible conflict. As government presumes more and more authority and casts itself in the role of God, that conflict grows greater. Our government now tortures, kidnaps, assassinates, engages in slave trade through taxation of wages and earnings, and puts innocent citizens in bondage of debt without their consent. Our government, the one we pay for, the one we created, is doing things the Bible says good men may not do. On our dollar it says, in God we trust. That expression was not used by our forefathers to affirm their religion. Our nation's founders did not have the slightest doubt of the existence of God. They put that expression on the money as a defiant declaration against King George III that we choose to trust God and not any king or government. It meant that we recognize that God created man with unalienable rights and man created government under him with no rights and limited authority. For government to assume any authority above man is inverted reasoning and false presumption. There's an example of government's false presumption right on this dollar bill. We are told this is money. It says dollar. I looked at an old law dictionary and it said that a dollar is money measured in gold or silver. If it is not gold or silver, it is not money under the law. Well, the dollar is not gold or silver, nor is it backed by gold or silver. But it must have value of some kind. The Federal Reserve prints them, loans them out, and demands them back with interest. There must be some value there. Surely the Federal Reserve is not so greedy and criminal as to charge our government interest on something that has no value. Fortunately, the Federal Reserve did explain the fundamentals of its money a few years ago in a bulletin called Modern Money Mechanics. So let's see what the creator, lender, and owner of your dollar says about its value. In the United States, neither paper currency nor deposits have any value as commodities. That means that both your cash and your bank account have no intrinsic value. They are, in fact, worthless in legal, economic, and practical terms. The only reason that Federal Reserve notes can function at all as currency is, quote, the confidence people have that they will be able to exchange them for real goods and services. They're suggesting dollars are not even real. So even the Federal Reserve, the originator of our currency, has admitted that Federal Reserve notes have absolutely no value outside of our imaginations. So much for Federal Reserve propaganda. That was the good news. The truth is much worse than that. When you accept and use Federal Reserve notes, to you they have negative value. They are damage to you. When you get a dollar, you are not getting money. You are trading your labor, goods, or services for an obligation, a debt. At the very top of the dollar, it does not say Federal Reserve money or Federal Reserve currency. It says Federal Reserve note, as in promissory note. If you're familiar with promissory notes, you will recognize the creditor's name goes at the top, the debtor just below, the signature of the debtor's representative and a witness, and the enumeration of the debt. That is not a dollar. It is an IOU for a dollar, an instrument of debt and obligation of the United States government, and by taking possession of it, you become a debtor. Your government borrowed that dollar at interest and promised that you would pay the interest through all kinds of taxes, fees, fines, licenses, permits, judgments, and demands. As the Federal Reserve said, the dollar is not a commodity. It is a contract of debt attaching itself to anyone who touches it. That contract says those notes may be taken from you at the whim of government. Anything you buy with it may be confiscated by government. It's fool's money. 
The Federal Reserve note is the shackle and gun of the slave system known as fiat currency. The Federal Reserve banks have trapped our government into constantly begging for more and more loans and to push worthless debt notes on every American in a snowballing crisis of public debt and toxic currency. This note is the single most destructive force against our economy, wealth, and our freedoms and our opportunities, not to mention the integrity of our government's finances. It is truly a system of bondage and economic suffocation. Most Americans are fully brainwashed to think this is money. The hour is late and the problem is massive. Any solution now will have to be as large as the problem. So it is time for all of us who care about our future to start imagining a world where we no longer use debt and we no longer use unbacked currencies. And most important of all, that we never again allow our government to borrow. I'm Jerry Day. This is Matrix News Network.